be a recurring problem for me now, is now that I'm emceeing, I'm not used to I, what I used to do uh, back at the artist bar. So I'd sit in the audience while Matthew was up there on stage. And what I would try to do is I would just listen to what people were doing, what they were saying, and I'd, I'd come up with something, a song that seemed apropos for the moment, or I'd come up with a new, uh, new piece that I'd practice a little bit in my head while listening to people. But now that I'm the host, I really have to pay attention. Um, and it's, it means I have no time left <laughs> to prepare things. Um, so I kind of have something that's, that's in my mind, so I'm going to go with this, but I have no idea how it's, it's going to uh, come out because I've had not enough time to turn it over, but I have a feeling if I don't do it, I'm not going to do it wrong. So. Everything that drowns me makes me feel alive is on the radio right now. It's a great song. And it's a neat line. It reminds me of something completely... It just sounds unrelated, but it's the same thing in my mind. It's as soon as you walk outside, out into the bright light, your pupils dilate. They get smaller. As you enter a field of bright light, you cut back. So here I am at home with my kids. And they're on top of me, they're underneath me, they're yelling at each other, yelling at me, they're yelling at my wife, run around, I step on Legos, I trip down the stairs on something they left there, I'm asking them not to trip down the stairs themselves, try to wipe things off of, and all this. And all I want is a break. A chance to go out and, and do something else, go up on stage and, and sing a song, go out dancing, and just releasing the, the energy of, of movement, or or go out and just go for a walk, something quiet, without a kid on my head and another one on my knee. Because pupils dilate when you go out with the light. My father was an astronomer, and he'd leave us for, for weeks at a time. He'd go out into the deserts of New Mexico or Nevada. And when I was eight, I got to go with him for the first time. And he was never really a talkative man to begin with. And I kind of, I kind of thought that maybe while we were out there together, he would say more, but he didn't. We spent almost the entire time with him either saying things like "Watch out for the rocks there" or "Don't fall off the edge." I'm not saying anything. And we went out there, and we watched the stars, and we came back. And I asked him afterwards, like months afterwards, because it wanted me. I'm like, why did we do this? Why, why do you have to go all the way out there to do that? You could sit here and watch just from our house and then you'd be here with us. And he said, in order to see the faintest lights, you have to surround yourself with dark. Because pupils dilate when you go out with the bright lights. It makes me wonder, one of the coolest things about Judaism is you're not allowed to be a rabbi until you're married. Because why should people in your flock listen to your advice if you aren't going through the same pains that they are? Why should they take marital advice from somebody who gets to watch it from a distance? It makes me wonder if one of the reasons there are sex scandals in, in so many churches, not just the Catholic Church, but in so many churches is because as you enter bright light, your pupils dilate. In the darkest places, you see the faintest lights. Everything that drowns me makes me feel alive. You surround yourself with things. And in surrounding yourself with things, they become invisible to you. And all you can see are those things that you're not. My dad never seemed to care when we left the house, when we moved out, when I joined the army, when my brother went his way to the Air Force, never seemed to affect him. Never said anything about it, never wrote anything about it. He wrote poetry, he did things like that. He was, he was artistic also. He lived out in the desert all by himself. And he liked it that way. But every now and then he'd go into town and he had a great time. And when I went to visit him as he was dying, everybody in town knew him. And by then, but then I think I figured it out. I went with him 
45 minute drive over, honest to God, a dried stream bed. There was no road out to where he lived. It was a stream bed that cut through and you had to have a fairly heavy duty vehicle to make it there because the entire car would shake anything else into little pieces. And way out in the middle of the valley, surrounded by absolutely no people, he was happy. But when he went into town, he was well loved. Everybody knew him. Oh, you're telling me something. That's great. Because people's dialect when you go out of the line. And people love you more if maybe you can take a break. And I wonder, even though he never said it, if his silence about us was the same thing or if he just didn't care. Thank you.